once you've worked your way through the Process 2012 tone mapping controls and you've added a bit of clarity to your document, we have two options at the bottom of the basic panel to finish off these edits. These are the Vibrance and Saturation controls. Both of these are global hue intensity settings. You're probably familiar already with the concept of a saturation control from other photo editors you've used. So typically what saturation controls do, as you probably know, is increase or decrease the intensity of all hues in the document by the same amount. This can be useful, but it can also quickly create color bands or color clipping or other artifacts that basically distract from the quality of color in the image. The Vibrance option takes the saturation concept a step further. It will take a look at the hues in your document that are most likely to be saturated to begin with, and it will increase the intensity of the other tones relatively more than the ones that are more saturated. Typically what this means in practice is that anything that is yellow or orange or red will be saturated less than anything that is blue or green. And it can just vary depending on the image. So let me give you a quick example. If I boost the vibrance up to around 50 in this image, you can see that we do get quite a bit of increased saturation in the sky and quite a bit in the grass. But you'll notice that the warm tones on the rocks and on this house structure really haven't changed too much. So I'll go ahead and undo that with Command-Z or Control-Z. And now we'll increase the saturation control by 50 as well, and we'll see what result that gives us. If we look now, we can see on the side of the house here, we've got sort of a, uh, a glowing saturation effect along the edges of these panels. The rocks are much more saturated, and the greens especially have become oversaturated. The sky remains relatively the same as we had with Vibrance. So you can see that there is a definite difference when using Vibrance versus Saturation. It's also worth noting that the Vibrance is a great option when you're working on portraits because it does a good job of protecting skin tones. You can add a subtle increase to their intensity without creating any type of color band or unwanted transition. So here again, I'm going to undo the Saturation control and what I usually do with these is to move the vibrance enough until I'm right where I want to be. And from that point, if I need a bit more color intensity, I'll just add a small amount of saturation. So let's go ahead and boost the vibrance here. Maybe not quite as much as we did originally. That looks pretty good. And from this point, I think I'll boost the saturation just slightly. And again, just like with the black slider, I'll move this back and forth until we get a result that looks pretty good. Maybe right around plus 10. And once you're finished with that, you're finished with the basic panel edits and we can move forward to the curves panel.